Welcome to another episode of Keep On Painting. Uh, this week, really good painting. I was super happy with this one. I felt like I kind of had a little breakthrough of my own on this one. And uh, so yeah, get started. And uh, oh, so this week I, I wanted to talk about being a sellout or what that means or is it even real? In my opinion, I don't think it's even real, I guess. The, uh, you know, I think that, like, I've never heard a talented artist refer to another talented artist as a sellout. It's a term that's really only used by artists that are hacks or, or they're not talented or they're not capable of being a sellout, I guess. And so, yeah, it's kind of a term that's just used by bad artists to make good artists feel bad or to try to make them feel bad. It's kind of a jealousy thing. And so, like, the example I always think of is, like, you'll hear people say, like, like uh, you know, I like Nirvana before they sold out in, uh, you know, the rock band Nirvana. And... Uh, but it's always said by someone who's like never written a song in their life or doesn't know how to play guitar or anything. And and so, yeah, like you would never hear Tom Waits say, I like Nirvana before they sold out. Or, you know, another good songwriter is never going to say that. And so, yeah, it's kind of a non-term, really. Like it's just, you know, I've been selling in art galleries for... I don't know, 20 some years now, I guess, 25 years. And, uh, you know, the one thing I've noticed is that if you have a developed skill and your work has a unique voice, people want to buy it, you know? They don't care what the subject matter is. It can be weird. It can be beautiful. It can be mundane. If you have a developed skill set of some sort, whether it's drawing, painting, rendering, sculpting, whatever, and it has a unique voice to it, which usually by the time you've developed a skill, you have your unique voice, people are going to want it. You know, it's just that simple. You know, it's it's really not any more complicated or mysterious than that, you know, and so people who call someone a sellout, you know, it's it's kind of the mark of an amateur, I guess, or someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, really. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> you know, I was a young artist at one time, and I, there was this one older artist, and he would, did kind of these kitsch paintings that I didn't, I, I didn't really care for them. I didn't get it, you know? And... I kind of dismissed him. I thought, ah, oh, he's an old guy. He's just trying to cash out. He's selling out, you know. And then one day, I saw this show of his, and it was it was kind of mind-blowing. Like, it was totally apocalyptic, like, kind of anti-corporation, you know, sort of had this political message to it and everything. And I was just kind of blown away. I didn't see it coming at all. And in that moment, I kind of thought, wow, like, how dare I have judged this artist who's been painting for maybe 50 years. You know, I saw like maybe one year's worth of his paintings, judged him as a sellout. And, you know, who knows what he's going to do the next show? Who knows what he has at home in his closet, you know, or, or that, you know, he just hasn't shown to the public yet, you know? And so, you know, you kind of have to judge an artist on their entire body of work, like once they're gone, you know. And so to, you know, call someone a sellout by looking at one and, and you know, by a 10-year period of their career is really, it's not right, you know. Painting's looking good. You can see it's kind of getting some volume to it. It's breaking up a little bit. So... You know, <clears throat> to call someone a sellout, you know, to look at, you know, one year's worth of their paintings or something, it it's almost like looking at the wheel on a car and then just saying, oh, this is a nice car. It's like, well, 
all you're able to see is the wheel. How can you tell it's a nice car, you know? So, you know, another good example is uh, Picasso. You know, he painted La Demoiselle d'Avignon, the painting that kind of marked the era of modern art, you know? And people... He, he kept it in his closet. He wasn't even showing it to people. And it wasn't until his dealer, uh, Conweiler, was in his studio and he's like rooting through everything, saw it, and was like, what is this, you know? And so, you know, it's kind of that same sort of thing where you don't know what the artist does in their, at home, you know? I've got some paintings out there that are, they're experimental, you know? They're kind of, they're weird, you know? They're some strange things and so you know you can't judge an artist like that and so to call someone a sellout or to think an artist is a sellout it's just kind of not a real term you know it's sort of it's sort of the mark of someone who doesn't know what they're talking about when they say someone's a sellout you know so it makes it easy to dismiss them too you know which is always good so this is looking cool i'm liking it it's on the home stretch here it was a uh, yeah this was a cool little painting i uh when i started i was a little nervous about starting it because it's so simple it's a road that goes straight back with two trees like that's like a really simple composition so how do you make that exciting and uh i did it just by making the trees very alive there's a lot of movement in the painting it almost feels like the wind is blowing and uh yeah it turned out pretty cool and it's pretty high contrast too which kind of makes it more exciting to look at you got the really dark bush in the foreground super bright trees against a dark sky and uh and yeah it worked right now i'm using a little piece of cardboard that i'm kind of using to get sort of the sensation of air or wind moving and uh yeah it's almost there so yeah the next time you hear someone call someone a sellout or or maybe you think someone's a sellout i would my advice would be look at their whole body of work and to just kind of realize that there's a lot more going on. And that, you know, people who buy art, what they want to see is they want to see a developed skill and they want to see a unique voice, you know, that that the artist has. And if you have those, you're, you'll sell all day long. You, you won't be able to make enough painting. So, hope you enjoyed it. Keep on painting, like, subscribe, I'm told that's really important, and uh, Instagram and all that good stuff. Keep on painting.